15 meetings called to order. Roll call member Pat I is not here today on vacation. And uh, item three is there approval of the agenda motion to approve it. So is there a second? Mr. Alger? Aye. Mr. Langman? Aye. Mr. Serby? Aye. Ms. Wilson? Aye. Ms. Shea? Aye. Mr. Chair will sign. All right. Is there approval, motion to approve the minutes of May 1st, 2019, for a session? May 15th, 2019, regular meeting. May 27th, 22nd, 2019, continue regular meeting. And a June 5th, 2019, for a session. Motion to approve as presented. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Alger? Aye. Mr. Lane? Aye. Mr. Serby? Aye. Ms. Robeson? Aye. Ms. Shea? Aye. Mr. Chair votes aye. Seven uh, new business ordinance number 699 the town code. Uh, that will be a public hearing on August 21st. Uh, you guys have heard this several times now. Uh, ordinance number 700 amends the town code chapter 21. The same thing that was also no action required for August 21st. All right, now so that's something we can do and talk about resolution 32-19. Points Victoria Luna to the Columbia Beach Planning Commission. She's not here, Greg, but I don't matter. She was on, she's on she vacation. And she was here for the West. She yeah. wasn't here last okay. time. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> she's the one that was helping even before. Yeah, she okay. helped us for all the work set up that I got. Yeah. All right, we'll start with a motion and a second with a discussion. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, discussion. Council discussion. Yeah. I know she's been volunteering with the planning commission for several months now, so she's like a natural yeah. I'd like to ask a question if I could. Is the council allow me to ask more any questions uh, pertaining to uh, appointments? I was wondering if Mike Cabri had applied for a position on the planning commission. I have not received any application. Okay. I, I once shaking his head and one saying no. Uh, so. I, I know he has. I don't know where it is, but I know he has submitted it to so somebody somewhere. When you have that? I'll do what I have that, I would assume. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. The reason I asked is because um, I also thought that he had. And uh, I was just wondering if there was some uh, reason why uh, we hadn't seen that yet. Okay. So, How many vacancy? Um, is there still a vacancy? Yes. That's what I thought. There's still a vacancy. Yes. It's, on our, it's, on it's on our Facebook page. So can um, Richard, is it Richard? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can you try to find his application? I, I, I can ask him to resubmit it. Just yeah. Like, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll send it, I'll have it sent it to you. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Eric. Okay, back to the vote then. Um, is there any other discussion on this recording? Okay, so it's up to vote, Mr. Aye, Mr. Manning. Aye. Mr. Serby. Aye. Ms. Rose. Aye. Ms. Shea. Aye. Ms. Shea votes aye. Uh, just tell her welcome to the Thank you very much. You bet. Don't call her on vacation, Mari. No doubt. <laughs> she tried. <laughs> Okay, the next item is resolution 33-19. Approves immediate funding for a critical item for the waste of water treatment plant. It's in tab B. Is it in F? It's in B. Okay. So my book is in F. Oh never mind. Sorry. It is here. So this has been going on for a period of time now, correct? Yeah. And this is a very critical item that's needed. Yes, <laughs> it uh, maintains your, your final treatment of uh, going out of compliance. It's on the sand, but... Um, 
moving forward, is there any, um, these types of items, I'm just was curious, I know that some jurisdictions now are going to lease products with vehicles in a large piece of that glass, I guess, and uh, at least ensuring the road you have a depreciated over a period of time to um, have some insurance taken back on if they alter it on a shorter period of time. So in this one, this is a part of a complete system. Um, if it was a individual piece of equipment that was used individually, okay. I think it would fall under what we're talking okay. about. Okay. Um, this is actually physically in the status of put in place okay. and stays in place. It's not something to take in or out. Okay. Okay. I don't think it would fall in the Any other Yeah, I got the we, uh, we did uh, we did check in at the time. I was on. Um, I've been involved in this issue since before we started the budget process. Um, for some reason, there's been renting a renting a compressor before it was even brought to our attention that we needed one for well over a year. Um, I reviewed the quotes when we were going through the budget uh, first day night was any expenditures or surprises or what have you for public work. And various things came up and none of them were in the capital improvement plan at all. We had never been put in that. Um, and the quotes that we had received were not an apples for apples quote whatsoever. Um, we really weren't issuing a spec. We had salespeople come in and selling us every piece of gold, plate, and silver, and platinum that we put on these things. Public Works had decided initially to build a separate building to put it in because of a corrosive environment. I went out and looked at the environment. There's tons and tons of steel in the environment. There's not a slick of corrosion on anything or on the existing compressor either. So, at least we mixed that part of it. I asked Group Quinn, I don't direct anybody to do anything, but I suggested that we get additional pricing. Never saw it. Um, these compressors, based on one of the quotes that we've got, can be as low as $47,000. We're buying one that's $87,000. One of the biggest problems I have with it is Public Works is planning on installing it. You, you don't install equipment like this that comes with a manufacturer's warranty if it's installed by a certified installer with, and I'm not demeaning anybody with day labor. Um, we don't have any mechanics. We don't have any people who know how to do this kind of work that are trained in this kind of work. And uh, I just, I would be voting against this until a proper RFP and proper response to questions that were raised five months ago. So I'm not satisfied with the way it went forward um, at all. None of the questions that I raised through Wayne have been answered. So I have to ask, what's going on with this one? <coughs> uh, Mr. Serby uh, and uh, Council, Councilman Serby, I did get involved early on in the budget process. And I notified that uh, when it comes to this particular compressor, I'm not going to support the board's portion. But it's very difficult, and the quotes that we have come in are not apples to apples. There are significant variances, uh, as you can see in the cost. Uh, I do believe it's like $115,000 to $40,000. So the this, this spread in the three different quotes that we receive uh, is that. Uh, the cause of uh, Mr. Sherman's input uh, pointing out that there might uh, been some initial things that we need to think through uh, with the lack of corrosion in this field, with the other types of things. Uh, the public works uh, director, I believe, is with, with uh, the wastewater treatment plant supervisor, and I think they got an engineering opinion on what the was fit would be based off of the three that we had, uh, the three pricing quotes that we had, and that's where the $80,000. We had that. That was uh, came in. So I feel like uh, from a procurement standpoint, it's it's such a specialized item. It's not like going to work and off the shelf uh, with a lot of this stuff. Um, I haven't seen any comparable things here. It's a true apples and apples. We have to ask for it. That's what I'm saying. Uh, 
Well, you can't just have a salesman come in. One, I would like to just point out one thing. We've been connected to a, I believe it's a Sunbelt mm -hmm. compressor for years, almost two years now. I think mm -hmm. about the, I believe it's nine months. So longer than that. Because it was longer than that when I looked at it in March. My point is this. That Sunbelt compressor, if we're in a cast crunch, we could go buy one of those. You use the exact same machine and keep it hooked up like it is and own it at any rate. They, okay. play, they place or, eight replacement units. Well, I mean, part of the problem there is that we don't maintain a single thing. And I'm just pointing out what I have found. This is not um, speculation. I did a lot of digging to find out why we were having to do this. And I'm just saying that right now, what we're being asked to appropriate, I believe, <clears throat> would literally be cut, cut almost in half and should not be installed by public works. The forty-six thousand dollar was an exact replacement for the piece of equipment. We have had numerous failures of that piece of equipment. It's a different style compressor for one thing than what is currently recommended by Reed Engineering. And that was the design engineer. The, the replacement is a rotary screw versus the exact replacement of forty-six thousand. Um, the, uh, as per his statement, Mr. Reed's statement in here that the rotary, screw, rotary screws are must, much more dependent. Now, the high bid was actually with a rotary screw, and it was being taken the, it was the supervisor's opinion that we should get it out of the building, it's, uh, if you notice the area. So, getting it out of the building and putting it in a, a uh, conditioned space. A standalone condition. Um, that was um, Mr. Servi's suggestion. We pulled that one pretty much off the table after we got the engineer's recommendation that we go ahead and spend the eighty thousand, eighty-five thousand dollars for the upgraded rotary screw. Can I ask a question? Um, does the for eighty thousand dollars for the some type of warranty with the there's an equipment warranty. Like a one year or? I believe it's five years. This is Cadillac one. Crackers had an extended warranty. Yeah, that Cadillac like that. Stuff. However, if it's not followed when it's followed. Right. It's That's what I mean. Is there a stipulation of the warranty to be um, installed by? You know, I saw no such phone? document. Did right. you look at the warranty? Well, this would have had any if, ands, and buts. Mm -hmm. Certainly. You know, you have, you're saving approximately $30,000 yeah, if you do it. Well, by replacing the, the one. Now, the warranty is void. Right. I'll be so happy to go back and check. Grand if you'd like. Mm -hmm. um, Hold on, I still okay, have ahead. a question. So, um, I think that was one question. Is, is it does it void a warranty for us to install it? Um, but secondly, it sounds like, I don't know, I just did this. Quick math on what you have here in the email. We spent about forty thousand dollars just on these replacement mm -hmm. units over and over again. Right. So eighty thousand dollars seems reasonable to fix the problem. Um, so I don't have a problem with that, but certainly if it's going to avoid the warranty, then we might want to consider whatever we have to do to keep the warranty. One other point I'd like to make: is Reed Engineering is the one who specified the one that was installed. Okay, now they've turned around and acknowledge that the one that costs twice as much would be the one they install now, which makes no sense to me. Um, Sounds like they lived in so I mean, that's what it said in this email. And it was, basically. And that's the email we had before I asked for the additional price. We got basically no after We got one price one way and one another way. And one other way. So, and if that, my whole point really is procurement, we're trying to eliminate waste in public works after going through the budget. And I've asked uh, and suggested through the county manager that we try to tighten up and that he review and let us review on any procurement purchases and so forth to make sure we went through the process. And uh, so far, we've talked about a lot of things, but we're not going to that. But that's all I have. I'll be loaded again. So, uh, Ryan, if, um, if you went with the cheaper option, who installed that? That was still the same thing. I believe we were, we were installing it. It was a swap out. What would the cost be on our outside? 
I believe that's the best way to go and be more reliable, considering the amount of breakdowns that we had with the, with the last one. Um, but if you had it professionally installed, right? Yeah, professionally yeah, installed, like we should certainly install it. But if I had quote unquote certified, it's had an additional $30,000. Yeah. I can't imagine it. It's not. It's not. It's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a, he said it's a few minutes ago he'd never gotten the price for what it would cost to install it. No, I, I believe that I believe that might exist. I mean, I don't think, think all the I think Jill Ty, I think there is a, I think there is a document that says how much they can charge. But I will. The only point that I'm trying to make, and this is just an example. Yeah, this, this, is just an example. Uh, this is just an example. This is just an example I'm trying to make. We also went out the Friday before uh, festival weekend. I think it was Wednesday before festival weekend. Spent ten thousand dollars and rented a street. Around the beach and let it sit for the rest of the month and then drove it two more days before we took the pack. Ten thousand dollars. I had suggested that we get a quote from a parking lot cleaning company to come in once a week or once every two weeks or once a month and street uh, sweep the streets instead of tossing ten thousand dollars out the window. And we had to go get it and drive it and drive it back to Richmond. Was there any quotes of paper that? No, none whatsoever. It was done at lunchtime, some of the right in when everybody's shooting the ball at once, hey, we got a stream, clean the streets. Well, let's call so and so and get one. That's how it happened. We are blowing money, and we do not have it to blow. And I'm not bringing up things that are not true. I've checked into them. I've given Quinn at least five examples of massive waste of time, labor, and equipment. And I've asked Quinn if he's followed up on it, and he said, no, I haven't had time because I've been busy with the Tory Smith Park. So we continue to just gush money out. And I'm using this as an example of what's happening in town hall. And none of it's on capital improvement plans. Let me ask you a question, Rob. Can this, I know that this is still five votes. Can we make it until August 21st? And then go back and we'll continue to rent. Yes. Can we make it until August 21st? Can we continue to rent? Hopefully it doesn't go down. We've gone through eight. During a time when it's not being we may have 16 hours. Today is the 7th, so 14 days from now. If you, if the council could vote uh, on this vote until the 21st, if you bring us the warranty information, make sure there's no break in the warranty if it's installed in the house. Uh, and what was the other thing? I mean, I, I would vote for this right now, provided that we add that, you know, it doesn't void the warranty for personal installation. But that's my, and I understand Steve has a different opinion, but yeah. I, I would propose no, no, to vote on cost, it now. If the cost may go up as the additional charge for the year's storage. Right, in order to keep the warranty. That's only if the warranty requires it. So you're not satisfied <laughs> that we haven't met the procurement rules or fit free prices for something of that magnitude? I think that we this is not. the brand and the type that the engineering firm recommended, and that we could get more prices for things, but why would we go against the recommendation of engineering So Well, the recommendation, well, uh, you know, I, I, I built sewage treatment plants, I'm sorry, I've dealt with this kind of equipment 35 years of my life, and, you know, if y'all want to just go ahead and do it this way, fine. We've been renting for well over a year, I can tell you. 
and another month to get adequate pricing, which should have been obtained in April, May, and June, as I suggested to the town manager, which had been done. We go. But here we are, always up against the wall, as Dallas is always reminding us when we get down to a crucial, it's critical, and we get our back against the wall, and we don't have any good information or any good quotes, and we're going to vote. I'm just proposing an alternative okay. vote. Okay. It can fail, it can pass. Okay. I'm just proposing an alternative. Mr. Mayor, um, I, I, you know, this, this seems pretty urgent. But I, I have a question for the town manager and for Rob. And, and that is, why wasn't this in the budget? We, were, we asked if it should have been put in the budget. I mean, it, yeah. I realize that this is a critical piece of equipment, and you've been running for a year. Over a year. No? It has not been over a year. I get a file for it. I mean, I, I'm just, I mean, I'm just questioning because, this because why. it was brought up to you in January. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, you it know, it had been three months. I understand the need for it, and I, and I plan on voting for it. But you know, I would look to you, then, as the town manager, to where we've got, when we've got a piece of equipment that we're replacing the rental equipment that continues to break and continues to cost us money, that we build it into our budget coming in and not pass a budget, and now we're doing a budget amendment. To, to replace the piece of equipment. That's your job. Yeah. Councilman Lehman, I appreciate you uh, taking us to that point because it's kind of uh, something that I want to do a summation on the topic about. Uh, this type of capital improvement or equipment purchase speaks to that 20% uh, reservation on additional charge that we've got built in the budget to secure uh, those monies and that kind of pot of money. So uh, we just hadn't had uh, gotten to that part of the conversation yet. It was identified to me in January. Uh, there were three quotes, uh, but to Mr. Serby's point, they were not apples to apples. Uh, we had an engineering recommendation from the same firm. I do believe that they did learn over time, and this almost solidifies and supports the upcoming vote for the water and the sewer increase charge. So, uh, and, and that's how it's built in. It's actually coming out of those contingencies uh, that we're trying to support via that kind of funding. And, and, and I understand that, but. But if we're if it's costing us money for six months or first school year, whatever the time was, you know, this should be in the budget that we just passed. Right, how many well, yeah, I've got the floor. I've got the floor. I got an answer for you. I mean we 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 shouldn't this should have been built into the budget. It shouldn't be if we pass these resolutions to go up for this twenty percent. We already knew this equipment was broken and we replaced it with no equipment. It should have been in our budget. This, this one that we just heard. I guess what we know is real quick is we know it was broken, we know it was failing, and we don't want to try to fix it. That's yeah. it. We know it was broken and it had to be replaced. Now, we, when we talked about the budget, and I got you back on this, Rob, we made it very clear no contingencies were to be carried in the annual budget for public works, and that no critical items that were CIP items were not going to be covered in the budget. That's what the direction was. And if you all remember the budget, the budget um, meetings or conversations that we had in council meetings, I kept pointing out that there are certain items that needed to be footnoted on the bottom. I used that word several times. And that was one of them. It was that compressor. And it never got footnoted on the bottom of the final budget. Yeah, it, it was. The, the dollar figure was there in the report. Also, in order to operate and continue operating, since it has been in I mean, you've been spending the money, you know. So there had to be some kind of the four thousand dollars a month rental fee put in the budget, and four thousand dollars a month, you know, for twelve months. I mean, we're gonna pay this in two years, and it was pretty much just budgeted monthly instead. Anyway. Well, it wasn't budgeted at all. It was being dragged out of other line items through last year's cost because I traced it back. Okay, but it was being paid for obviously yeah. through the budget. Without, without a resolution to amend the budget. That's correct, because nobody knew anything about it in the prior budget year. Um, and what we tried to do with this budget was instead of just saying what it cost us to do it last year and increase it, we went through and spent 
uh, three or four <coughs> columns long meeting and going through and applying logic to every line item that we put in the public works budget. And they had basis for everything. And then there was, a, there was not going to be any Robin Peter to pay Paul type of stuff to cover things. So we, we either had it covered or we didn't have it covered. We knew we were paying $4,000 a month, but we didn't put that in the budget. We did not put $4,000 a month in the new budget because, because as, because so, by, the, by the time the new budget came, we were supposed to have had this solved and resolved because we started this in March and April. So, okay, real quick. So I'm at the point where this seems to be more of a bridge to me because here's the, here's the problem. We have a failing piece of apparatus that is very important to the town's infrastructure, needs to be replaced. Our options are one, to continue to rent the generator and run it, or two, replace it. We've had uh, bids, albeit not uh, close in similar fashion, um, but in, on, based upon an engineer's recommendation, this is where we stand right now. Now, my only question from my point of view is, is Will we void the warranty by installing this ourselves? Can you bring in, uh, quote unquote, someone who has the expertise installing this? Yes. With our labor? Uh, uh, potentially. We didn't budget to install it with our labor. Okay. But my point is, so at the end of the day, what has to happen is this has to be replaced. Agreed. Okay. So that's where we stand right now. All right. So my suggestion is. Two, two suggestions. One is we can defer this to August 20, 21st, which is two weeks from today, or and, uh, and get the information from which is two simple pieces of information. Or some additional pricing. Or we can um, approve. Can we approve this tonight, and then once we've got that information tomorrow, just do another resolution to add that out on top of it? So that way we've already purchased this, it's already done, it's on its way in. And then once we found out that we won't void the warranty, then we can go ahead and do it, or we would void the warranty, then add the extra on to yeah, Let's just say that's a great question, Frank. What happens if we if it's not if we have to pay for outside labor to do this work? Well, uh, we know we add it to the cost, and I can get the projection from the. So we don't have to do. But can we do this tonight to say that we? Purchase this stuff yeah. and then wait to actually install it until we found out if it's going to be back by all that. I'm good with that. Can I ask one question? Maybe a Maureen. Maureen, is this something that would come under CIP or not? Yes. I just want to make sure. Thank you. Yeah, I would expect to also see it in CIP. Yeah, well, there's mm -hmm. numerous things right. similar to this. Okay, I would also. I would also expect that there's monies to replace, make emergency replacements. Mm -hmm. so yes. Yes. The maintenance is included in the budget, but capital expenditures is a CIP item over a certain amount of money. That's how the right. budget is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, so we discussed it now. What does the council look like? Uh, if I can point to one more point, I just want everybody who's listening on the TV and everything to realize that this is why our water and sewer rates continue to go up because we're wasting money. That's all that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I suggest we vote for it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Allison. Aye. Mr. Allison. Aye. Mr. Sutherland. 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 Aye. Next is uh, Resolution 34-19, which amends fiscal year 2018-19 budget general fund. It's in tab F. Yeah. And you want to talk about this? Mr. Mayor, Council, uh, this is uh, through Ms. Gomez, uh, CFO. This is just financial housekeeping. Uh, this is uh, just amending the budget. Uh, with one, two, and three, as you can see, that uh, additional monies are coming in. Uh, this is just a, a process that we go through to call that in some money from the budget. Uh, she double checked, uh, uh, participated in the resolution, those are her numbers. Okay. Where is the money going to go to in the amended budget? 
I will have to check that with Ms. Gomez, but because it's coming in late, I think it goes into a separate, uh, a separate line and make that decision as we end close to work. And then we should go into the respective line items too. Yeah. She has yeah. Oh, communication of that. Okay, got it. Yeah, I'd have to pull my budget just for that. Probably, probably to cover the uh, the cost, the additional cost. Uh, Okay, so as everyone knows, um, Friends Bell in our park has been trying over the past several years to try to get a conservation easement over the park, uh, which would give the town some of the money that um, I know that it would like to have and also then uh, preserves the property as a park. Um, so we had applied to the Virginia Outdoors Foundation, I guess it was last year or maybe a year and a half ago, and um, ultimately we did not get that grant. Uh, this year the, the Virginia Land and Conservation Foundation has, um, has a similar kind of grant uh, opportunity. The difference with it is though that it is um, a matching grant as opposed to the BOF grant which was 100% um, of a grant. This is a matching grant which is why if the property is valued at 900000 um, the what we're asking for is 450000 and then the grant, um, I mean, the, the match would be the town's, uh, the, 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 the remainder of the <coughs> value of the property. Uh, so... You're asking for $450,000 from the grant. Correct. And Correct. No. No. The land, the land itself is would be the match. As so who owns the land? We do. Sure. If we're giving $400,000 in equity to something, who owns it? Or is there a, you know what I'm saying? Well, we assume that the town owned the land and that the town could use the, could use the land as the match. But so we would continue to own the land? Yes. The town would continue to own the land. And uh, also, 
as an aside, I learned um, in talking with uh, an organization, the Virginia Land Trust um, organization, which, which would likely be the holder of the easement, because you have to actually have a, uh, an organization hold the easement. Yes. No, but they don't own the land. Yeah, but they basically own the, the rights of it's use of the land. It's in a trust. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can't do anything with it. Right. There are, the all those grants are like that, though. I just point that. Oh, That's yeah. what you're buying. You're right. You're buying the conservation. The, what, what, the, what the conservation easement does is it, is it removes from the usage of the land the, um, the opportunity to develop it for commercial or residential um, uses. Uh, but uh, one of the things I learned to, uh, yesterday from the organization that would likely hold the easement is that um, the town uh, would be able to get a tax credit from the from the this opportunity of giving the land uh, to match the grant, and that tax opportunity could then be sold in the secondary tax uh, credit market uh, at about 80 percent of the value. So. There's additional value coming to the town by, by the uh, opportunity of being able to sell the tax credit to, on the open on the open market. And, I mean, I don't know all of the details. I've been looking at uh, up a little bit, but that seems to be another opportunity for revenue to the town. In terms of the uh, actual uh, drafting of the resolution, I did not personally do that. We had two people from who are active in the Friends of Eleanor Park, uh, Christy Moffin and Pam Tolson, go to a workshop recently on uh, how to apply for the grant. And uh, so between the two of them, they were the ones who wrote the, the, um, this draft uh, resolution. I don't know. Christy actually is here, and she can answer any specific questions that you might have. I, I have a couple of sure. questions, and uh, I guess your questions. And you just kind of hang with me for this for a minute. So, uh, Street Road Court, Street Road Court, all right? So, 12 Elm Street, 12 Elm Road, and 12 Elm Court are all different things, follow me? Mm -hmm. So, my concern is, is this Elmer Park? <coughs> is this a piece of property that's owned by the land, Cornwall Beach land? Or is this Cornwall Beach um, would be the next that there was three in there that I identified before. Um, well, the point I'm trying to make is, are we calling it a park? And if it's a park, then it's going to require a super majority to pass this, right? Is it a public place or is it town and land? Those are three different, very different things. Right. And so I think we probably need a legal opinion on where exactly this piece of property falls. Is it a park? Is it town of land? Or is it a public place? Okay? Well, so, okay. All right. So that would be, that would, uh, I really would like to get that identified before, uh, at least in my opinion, we move, move forward. Because one thing, we may be, it may be a boot issue. We may not be able to, if it's a park, we may not be able to do this without a super, super, super majority. Um, I don't know what other two, is it, are both, all those categories fall on a super majority vote? I believe uh, everything that has been on, and this kind of goes back to the discussion of the last year, is it, a, is it a public asset or is it a, a, a open to the public? If it's open to the public and it's been established, Anything that we do to offer it would be a super majority vote. And that's kind of the discussion that we had about a year ago. Um, so, uh, in order for us to do anything to, to pursue it or not pursue it. For the sale of town public property, that would be super majority. Now, if you do any alter, and this was according to Jim, if you do any alteration to it. Um, well, I think the the, uh, the language of the um, code, Virginia code, says to sell. Yeah, that's, it says that's, specifically to sell. No, the next question is, is because this is not, you know, it's not clean, right? It's not, we're not selling it, but it's going into trust, and we can only, we can only do things, certain things on it, not other things. What, what does that constitute? And, and I don't know, uh, 
unfortunately, Mr. Cuomo isn't here. Uh, he's out of the state, and I think later on this week he's going to be out of the country. So I'm disadvantaged at that. I'd be remiss to come. Mr. Mayor, I think we should have a presentation on this yeah. as a, a we've talked a lot about what conservation is and stuff may be retained in the Maryland Park and Lab. Now they finally got something, we should have a presentation that very that answers a number of these questions and if we have a question, we should be put forward and answer it in the presentation. That may be the gym has to be a part of the presentation. Mm -hmm. I, just, I think we really, I think first and foremost, I, I'm not opposed to this at all, but I just want to, I think we really need to identify exactly what it is. And here's one of the reasons why. Because at one point in time, we almost sold a gentleman in town a piece of land. In fact, it was initially passed, but then realized later on we could not do it. So it didn't look very professional. It wasn't very professional. So rather than make that mistake again, my preference would be that we identify exactly uh, what this property is. Is it just town land, or is it a public place, or is it a park? And once we identify that, then we will know what is suitable for it and what we can do with it. Well, well have to I I mean, no, we're not looking for somebody else. The restrictions on the easement are what they are, so we should be enlightened on what those are and make sure we're good. Okay, this is two separate issues for me. Okay. One is the restrictions of the easement, I understand that. The other is the language that we use to describe it and what that means to Virginia State Code. And I think that what is it we can't have somebody else tell us what it is. We, we get to decide that. Currently, it's still identified on the map as well. Apparently, on the uh, USGS map, it's <laughs> identified as the Eleanor Park Tourist Camp. It is. Eleanor Park Tourist <laughs> Camp. And some maps I've seen Eleanor Park, um, but Eleanor Park Tourist Camp. That's is the born. United States Geographical Survey. But in the, the town, maps that they point us to, the, the program point us to, that's how they are, which is why we yeah, chose that. Two. Well, two. I guess I have a, a basic question about that, though. I mean, if there is a supermajority that would vote for it, does it really matter? Yes, if there's a supermajority that would vote for it, this easement, well, let me also say that this this res, this uh, sorry, let me step back. There is a deadline of August 20, yeah, 29th. Just, that's that's when we have to submit this. Um, period. I mean, there's no. That's when we need to submit it. Uh, this doesn't obligate the town, the, as, as you can see by the resolution, it doesn't obligate the town to accept the grant if, we, if it's awarded. So these could be things that could be figured out over time. Okay. Uh, do we know when the grant would be awarded? Um, I don't know off the top of my head. Exactly. They gave us a timeline at the workshop, but it's by the end of the year, the, the we would know who got it, who did it. It goes through you know, all kinds of cycles that will start pretty much in September or after Labor Day. They've got all these committees. There are five different um, categories that you can, that one can apply. You can pick a primary and a secondary. So they, all those committees have to get involved. So it is going to be a few months process, but they said by the end of the year, and I was very impressed as people had their stuff together. It was, uh, um, it was a tight ship run for that two hour presentation. Um, they knew what they were talking about. They answered questions. The presentation was good and um, very um, detailed. And the grant application itself is as well. There are a lot of um, markers you have to hit. And part of their expectation is that it is open to the public. Um, really, in any land that they were to consider, if it weren't open in the public to the public, it would have to be because it might be a dangerous situation, or that would be an anomaly. Mm -hmm. But it is expected the land would be used for the public to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And one of the big um, um, criteria that they use is the Virginia Outdoor Plan, which talks a lot about not only land conservation, but recreation and all, things at Eleanor Park dovetails into very well. But we have to be able to, to prove that we dovetail that way, and we can. So, but it is public expectation. It's not gonna, 
I know that people get worried that it's going to sit the way it is, and that's not, that's always an option, but it's not the best option, and it's not necessarily the true option. What this really does is protect it from the devil. Yeah, when we've looked at conservation easements in the past, it has never been that it would remain, you know, unusable or unused. We had always thought it would be, uh, have uh, recreational facilities on it of some sort. And as you know, I've mentioned, I've I've shared with you my idea for how it could uh, look. Um, so, anyway, but we are, uh, you know, waiting to know what you would like for us to do. We are only passing a resolution to allow the application to go in. Mm -hmm. Correct. If, in fact, they pick on the beach, mm -hmm. they, I assume, will offer us a grant Mm -hmm. with the stipulations and so forth in it at that time, which we would have to look at, study, and decide if we wanted to accept. Is that correct? Correct. My point being that yeah. we can... We got some time. Right. This would get us applied for, but we can always turn it down if it's unreasonable. Mm -hmm. and, and like and that's that's ago, so last year we ran two options, and like I said, if we did get it, we don't like it, then we... We did the process of yeah, the cool that. and plus that gave us some time to determine what it is. Or, yeah, I think. As, as well, and also, if you're not actually selling the land, is it even a, is the, are the restrictions in Virginia Code even applicable? Is the four hundred fifty thousand dollars that they could potentially give us for that property? Does that have to be used on that piece of land, or no? Could it be used to do a park on the north side of town? Uh, I, I don't think it, it's... I cannot give you a 100% answer to that, but in all the stuff that I've read, the grant application, all this, the research I've done online, I haven't seen anything that says that the money has to be used for X, Y, Z or cannot be used for A, B, C. Okay. But um, we can certainly ask the question. Yeah, I, I, had a, I mean, I've never heard that. But, yeah, I mean... Um, yeah, okay, I get it. I think it works respectfully. Uh, okay, so um, I know Ms. Roberson had some concerns, and I don't, I'm not quite sure what they are, but I'm happy to work with any and all of you, through Kathy or, or whatever, to to make sure this is something that everybody's comfortable with. When would this be presented to Kathy? The 21st? Or the 21st? That would be absolutely when it could, when it needed yeah, to be. Yeah, the 29th. Okay. Uh, 50 years. Uh, no, it's just the, the uh, application process that we one, two, three, four, stand down. You pretty much explained the matching grant. So um, that was one of it. And it said that it awards grants for up to 50%, which means that we could get less than that amount. Well, it's possible. I mean, they'll do what they're going to do, and we're going to ask for it all and, and see what happens. But it could be less. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's, that was my assumption on that one. And then in the next couple down from that next to the last one, it has whereas a significant number of colonial beach pool and part-time residents have requested that the town the town submit a grant application. Where's your significant number come from? Yeah, I have an issue with that also actually. Well I'm just curious. Uh, significant to me. I mean, I think we're significant. <laughs> and, and I have no doubt that you are significant. But I take significant as a number, not status. Maybe we could just say, where's a number of, I mean, maybe we don't, we can remove the word significant. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think that that's, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm not hung up on that word. No, we're not hung up on that word. <laughs> Yeah, that one, that one is special. And then I just had, and I think you've done this, the very last, now therefore be it resolved. And, and I wanted an explanation for that. And again, I'm sorry. That, just a, an explanation behind that last paragraph, but I think that you've tried to cover that. Which um, has be it finally resolved that in yes. authorizing grant application council, submission. Yes. Yeah, the council is not. Correct. Correct. Right. And that the 50 percent of the property purchase price is an offer issued by the town on July 19th, 2018, plus 
50% of the project costs. So we don't go down. So all, it, all initial expense are just people time, right? There's no dollar. Well, it doesn't pay the project costs. It, it doesn't include like a labor cost, but it does include things like legal fees, right. survey but fees. But there's no cost to apply for the grant. No, there's no cost to apply for the okay. grant. So we it could award up to 450 plus half of whatever. Yeah, other they, they, they refer to it as the due diligence cost, but ah. yes, it's the legal fees, the survey fees, the appraisal fees. Oh, really? I can't remember what other kinds of fees. Because they're it's, like, yeah. it's like five or six things possible expenses There's that a, they'll pay up to 50 percent, but they won't. But they're not going to like pay the the town staff labor costs. Right. But right. yeah, if they're an outside surveyor and stuff like that. There are have been several of those costs incurred already. And I mean, well, prior to the proposal, prior to the approval of that conversation, I don't know. It's interesting to see how far back that was. Okay, so we'll move forward with this on the 21st of August. Okay. Hopefully, if you have a lawyer that you're comfortable with, I know that you do, <laughs> yeah. um, see if you can identify the answer for, is it a park, is it a public place, or is it a town and Well, the attorney that I've had experience with last year was calling it a public place. Uh, and did make it applicable to um, the terms of the Virginia Code that kept the, that restricted the sale. I understand. But your question is really whether or not sale is the same as a conservation easement. My question is, is what I don't want to see happen is us go through all this labor only to find out that you can't do what the same. I understand. I understand. So. I think, I think we're going to use our, we're going to have Jim Cornwell look at it. Mm -hmm. his legal opinion. Mm -hmm. Can we get the opinion of their attorney? That's what I'm saying. Can we get another opinion? We'll let Jim study that. And, and then confirm. maybe those two can even discuss it at some point in time. Just to determine what what it should be called, or also if it's a flick, if it's a, if so, a conservation easement is equivalent to sale. No, no. Okay, so. Is it is it a public home? Is it a public home? Public place? Yes. Okay. Yes. For instance, um, Town Hill is town-owned property, but it's also well, it's a public place. Correct. But you have to be permitted to use it. Things like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Over 25 people. Mm -hmm. uh, Robin Grove Park is a park. Mm -hmm. Okay. Public home land. Or is like the boardwalk stuff down here that the town owns that's publicly owned, right? It's not for use for unless it's identified for use for a set purpose and approved by the council. Or all three so, of those right. apply to the same laws. So so I'm not sure so why it matters which one the majority, then, to the vote. For a sale. Now the question of is a well, exception a of an easement <laughs> a sale, that is a question for a lawyer that I would right. like to know the answer to. Yeah, that, that question I I'm not sure. But the other question I believe that they all fall into the same category. All three of those. And in fact the state law I think says part comma public place. Okay. And like similar the, and similar uh, yeah. some properties or something like that. Great, great it's pretty um, open ended what they consider to be uh, a public space for the purpose of restricting the sale. Well, you know, it probably won't happen or would not happen, but there would be potential that at some point in time after we approved all this, went through all this stuff, that a group of citizens came and said, Hey, we own it. We gotta do this here. We gotta know that. We gotta yeah. cross our yeah. feet. Yeah. Uh, we do need to do that. So, so I just don't want to see that. I understand. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll do the due diligence here. Yeah, so I feel like we have two sets. I think And then we have all the information. Eddie, could you uh, maybe write just a, a, short, a short memo on yeah. the bullets that you pointed yeah. out so that it's 
very clear what we're looking at more from their attorney's opinion, yeah. and then we'll send that to Jim, and he can confirm and or come up with it. Yeah. That would be helpful. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Eric. Sorry to take so much of your time. That's quite all right. Maybe we had a chance to talk about that. Um, the council okay? Any discussion? Uh, no one changes that you know that's the morning and everything else is fine. And change the date, update the date. I don't know. I'm looking at them because I think they wrote it right. Oh, uh, you got it. Yeah. You got it. Those are the Kathy on the top. Got it. <laughs> so the next one is tab H. It's a uh, resolution 36 19, which appoints Richard Douglas as our new uh, zoning administrator. I think he's been working for us for a month or two, mm -hmm. at this point in time. Uh, is there a motion to approve him? Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Okay. Discussion? I just don't like to point out. We work hard, long and hard and end up with a young administrator who really had a tremendous amount of experience and so forth, unfortunately. Didn't work out. Um, I hate to see us settle for a lot less experience and knowledge than what we had. I was hoping we were heading upwards. We lost the planner, we retired. You know, we just don't have it. Um, I, mean, I know it's a town manager, but he's a hot hiring person. I know it's done, but I just. Uh, I, I think, Mr. Uh, Dutch, you have a background. I've been a member of AICP, the National uh, Certification Association, since 1996, and I've been involved in planning hands-on since 2000. So Before that, it was a plan. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How long have you held a zoning administrator's position? I have not. I've been a manager, but I've been, but I've always had a hands-on role in planning. So I feel very confident, and I'm, you know, I appreciate going having confidence and bring me on board. Okay. Any other questions? Mr. Kimberly Horn, 
which was the engineer and record company, um, provided an uh, engineer's opinion of problem cost, and also provided the, the uh, bid form. Um, they need to make sure that the two match. You know, and by the unit cost and the unit identifications. So they sent in a rendition yesterday. I forwarded it on to the VDOT. Uh, today, I, you know, VDOT said that, that they needed to re edit it. So I said to contact them Horn again tomorrow. And uh, we have them change the figures to match what VDOT. Just made a quick turnaround, hope that we can move that and uh, so get when, when notice. We think the first shot will hit the dirt. The, the, the <laughs> contractor is, is willing to proceed on the 15th. However, whether it gets through on them, but by the end of the month, I anticipate that it will be the shovels will be in the Like this month. They're, they're utilizing the full 150 days as of right now, and I can't do any, any real negotiation with them until I have to be able to give notice of the tenth award. You can't negotiate in the, the contract arrangement until they can submit one of their upfront items, which is the project schedule. Mm -hmm. Anybody's always going to eat up the whole thing, but then we can start accumulating the flow of the schedule and start packing the body and bring down those items. He's correct. So we're thinking like three or four months. Yeah, three or four months to complete. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> what, how long did we have a contract with the ball? That was a question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, but what effect would this have in that area during the white fest? Because that that area been, could very well be closed during the white fest. Because demo is going to you know, by their preliminary schedule, demo occurs over a 60-day period. Make sure you check with the boot on the left-hand side. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the additional issue is that they will still have access. Well, on that date, they put on a lot of stuff for the vets and everybody else down to, to further complicate the grant because it, it's a multi-year grant and it wasn't intended to be a multi-year grant and being a lot of push to complete it as soon as possible. Oh, so we're kind of, for yeah, we made the sandwich with time. Yeah, and uh, yeah. we don't want to lose the weather. It's a big chunk of that. And most of the impact, you know, the first part of the impact is going to be on the board. Okay. From Riverboat down to Columbia Island. And of course, there will be a period of time at the very end of the long while that will be shut down. Will be shut down. Um, and potentially, the second entrance. Okay, no, good. Well, good. the second entrance made into River's Edge will be impacted during part of that. The second first entrance will remain open. That's it. So basically, everything where Town Hill abuts the boardwalk, that whole piece of boardwalk will be gone. And close stage. Well, that might get reported and done by October. Yeah, I think that if uh, once we get a guy in contact, we can look at the scope and maybe other things and things depending on my next question. We're hoping is, that who's administrating the project. If we've got somebody who's a decent administrator. They may be able to work out pieces of the boardwalk. The big part of the boardwalk that's got to happen early is where our storm drainage type of cross is over. That has to happen immediately, which is assuming we guess we got the board from it. Oh, yeah. So that would be one of the, that's one of the longer read items. So it might be they take part of it out, but could be some of it in place. I and mean, once we get them under contract with whoever the uh, person is going to administrate it, uh, could possibly work out. You said three or four months, right? I mean, three, four months. Okay. I know nothing about it. So my question probably will be humorous, to say the least. <laughs> but um, could we start it 
not necessarily gas, but as much gas, the alternative transportation. Mm -hmm. that, I'm sure there's a grant that that would fall under alternative transportation. VDOT probably has some monies for that uh, as well. Um, yeah. You are, we are. We are not. We're not yet. So, do we need to create a six year plan so that we can start getting yeah. on the list? Yes, that is one of the things. Now, I should make you aware that, that we, uh, the LAP program conference is coming up in September. In September, I um, We're currently scheduled. Now, this year, VDOT has, has started a, a new program for uh, local the local assistance program training and required training that needs to be in place by 2020, uh, fall, fall of 2020. Um, that way you, you are all the ins and outs, you have some of this is trained, and you have two attending. And uh, sure. with myself and Leslie Lambert. Um, so we, we uh, at least to, I feel, that we were a bit underprepared. Um, I hope that the, this makes us a little more prepared in the future for for administering these projects. Yeah. And starting to some more. I will be there. I uh, just wanted to uh, dovetail that uh, since we're talking, it, it, was, it is going to be uh, intense interviews put in the ground in the next two months, but we were talking about the uh, council for this as well and I've been working with Rob and we've been able to identify uh, through infrastructure activities that we do the ability uh, to pursue uh, an active GIS uh, employee which will then uh, not only uh, do it from an overlay from a, from a strategic standpoint when it comes to um, infrastructure regarding sewer, regarding water, but there's also some uh, additional benefit to zoning, which will get it, uh, which will get them the lot lines, etc. So we are looking at a method to fund, uh, through different colors of money, a just position which will bring us up to date, which will then allow us to go after things like the six-year plan, and these things that have a little bit larger magnitude. And uh, I remember distinctly that on the council authority was, that uh, just operations in its entirety we wanted to improve is not fun completely. Uh, we've been able to make leaps and bounds strides towards that. So we got the report you have last year, but we got the rest of it. And uh, through um, through one and through you know, we were able to justify that this money is going to be able to support me and it's not having to have the knowledge of what needs to be in the plan that I you suggested to really formalize our new infrastructure plans and all the way to the mission working. This kind of allowed us to go to the this. Dr. Becker, one question. Who is going to administrate the uh, plan? Do we have something we're writing from it? We have the the rates, and, and we're current, uh, currently we're it'll come out of the grant. <coughs> okay, so we, we will we have to pay twenty percent. Evaluated the grant bid along with the administrative costs. Yes. So we have got that. Yes. It is a budget number. It's got to be based on something. Yes, it is a budget. So it is a budget number based on overall construction costs. So so we've got that an estimate of what our administration of the project is going to be. <coughs> the, the construction cost uh, is less than the, we do not have it in writing from the yet. The, the budget number is, is under the Construction cost is under the budget. I understand that, sir. And I've been asking, but so we haven't gotten to the point as, as far as who's going to administrate this. So the town manager's not administrating it like he's been going to park. And where, what are the costs? And not a budget based on 3% of the cost of construction, but how much is the hourly rate? How often? What's the plan with VDOT? Do they have a supervisor down to still finish? An estimate based I would on suggest that we can go over a, 
think we can go over this when I have the documents in front of me. Uh, and we've done that, that's all I'm asking. And yeah, we've done yes. that estimate. And we have an Based estimate, an hour. engineer's estimate also, to do the same thing. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to see a If you could email me that, that would be good. And that needs to be evaluated in the total grant, right? It's already in. Okay. How much roughly? How much is it? How much is it roughly? Right around 400,000. No, the administration. Oh, 39. 39,000. at your next council meeting. Hey, Derek, could you state your name and address for the council? My name is Derek Hall. I live at 2014 Beach Avenue, Plano Beach. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to offer a presentation at the next council meeting pertaining to a tattoo parlor that my wife and I would like to open in the uh, Colonial Plaza uh, Shopping Center near Rankins. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So we'll see you on the uh, 21st. So we'll be on the agenda on the presentation. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Walker? <laughs> well, I got a couple complaints. No, no, no. We're not accepting complaints. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> this has to do with the four you. Uh, as we come in with the bugs, uh, and you, uh, they, they need to be cleaned up. Uh, when you come in by the windows, uh, they need to be cleaned up. Now the other thing, this has to do with Elder Trailer Park. The, when you go into the conservation mode, the land that goes into the conservation mode, that land no longer is an asset for this town. No longer. We can now borrow money against that land if we had to. And uh, it says, whereas, and this is including previous councils, whereas the town council wishes to explore all out options relative to Eleanor Trailer Park. We want to have on the November ballot once and for all the voters of Colonial Beach to have a say so on what happens to Eleanor Park. 
We want it as a park, but not in a conservation mode. Thank you. Hi, Kathy Bachman, 1501 Augustine Lane. Um, very, very quickly, I just wanted to remind everyone we have the Beach Music Festival coming um, September 14th. I think you all got flyers. Um, and this is a very, last year was our first annual. This year we have our second annual. Last year we raised $17,000 for the Community Foundation, which as you know, 100% of that goes back into the community. This year we've added a third band. Um, and we are looking forward to a great day. I want to publicly thank Monroe Bay Campgrounds for their sponsorship and Westmoreland Health and Rehab Center as one of our sponsors, and we have a lot of other sponsors, not as large as those. So, hope to see you on the 14th. Thanks. Thank you, Kathy. I look forward to that. I'm actually going to be in town this time. It would be great. Mr. Mayor, can I bring up one thing? You Hello. sure can. Thank you. This has been on my mind for a while, and I keep forgetting, and I wrote it down this time. I gave you the second book. You know, it's just, I'm so getting used to it. That's what it is. Um, <laughs> parking lines, or whatever you call them, at the beach front. Scriping lines, Thank you. curb paving. Whatever that but, is. Yes. They're really hard to see, and I think people are having trouble with them. Come on, we can put this thing in them. Well, I requested uh, several months ago that we mark up a plan of where we needed to be and where we needed to paint curbs and where we needed to fix our non-parking signs and so on and so forth so that we could uh, get that out and get pricing on it. And I had the other day when I asked Clint about it, it was still not done. Well, you have, you have validation on that one now on packing up on I just see people backing into the bus going in this way, going in this way. But the parking, the curve is painted wrong colors, the signs aren't there in some cases, other cases they are. It's a mess. It's mm -hmm. been this way. Right. We've it's okay. been on our list for quite a while. Okay. All right. Well I just wanted to So I say the good thing is at least as early as June we seem like we're way ahead of parking problems. <coughs> so I think we'll probably be some on the second start because of the beach, trash cans, all those kinds of things. All things beach, all things We have, have 200,000, what, budget in those right now. Right. How's our projections going? No one, so the best one was way over, but I didn't know how it was tracking the quality. It was really like that. I was so. going to say, it seems to be tacky. It is. You know. The other thing is, please don't forget the sign of 2 o'clock, it says beach is with the arrow, and then the McDonald's comes down because they actually will knock on my door sometimes when I ask where beach is. <laughs> Well, it's because it's your house. Yeah, I know. That's true. Yeah, the, our the, poor the neighbors on the left, they get it all the time. Well, before we put new ones up, they'll fix the old ones. What's the, uh, not the, uh, not Google Maps, but what's the other one that I'll use? It tells you the traffic, the traffic, waves, 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 waves. Yeah, waves. That's the one that sends them down there. Oh, that one. Right to the house that Eric has for sale. They've actually driven through the driveway sometimes <gasps> into that property. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they sure will. Had an Elf fell out. Eric, Eric did it. Can I say one thing? Eric did it. 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 This is completely unrelated. Um, but uh, this is the, the first council meeting that um, our vice mayor has been at since she had. Uh, delivered a baby boy, and I wanted to congratulate her and welcome her back. <laughs> Wonderful to have you back, Robin. Thank you. Um, Eric, appreciate it not lasting that long. Really. Um, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you.